Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. Utah and Idaho are flirting with the possibility of a passenger train connecting our city to Boise. And I can tell you, the people of Boise are hyped. So I asked my colleagues at CityCast Boise to explain their conviction. And I tried to help them understand why we might not be quite there yet. It's Thursday, March 9th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Frankie Barnhill, lead producer of CityCast Boise, and Emma Arnold, host of CityCast Boise. You guys came in hot on the company (laughs) Slack with enthusiasm (laughs) over the idea of an Amtrak train that would connect our cities. And our team was like, oh, really? Uh, We hadn't heard about it. (laughs) Can you please give me the pitch? Why should Salt Lakers be into this? Yeah, you're like, what is Boise talking about? Frankie, I feel like you're the resident, like, public transit nerd. So you you start. <laughs> She's our train gal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the train guy. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm kind of, okay, I'm going to step into the shoes of uh, the Boise city government right now because our Boise city government is very excited about this. And I think there's some people in town who also are. Um, and we'll see how, how much of that is true. But yeah, so did you know that there used to be an Amtrak that would connect Salt Lake to Boise and go all the way to Portland with stops along the way, Allie. This is exciting. I didn't even actually know that. (laughs) Why is there no longer? So poor ridership, uh, which went wah. So that's a big uh, cloud that's hanging in the background that we can talk about later. Um, But yeah, it it ended in the late 90s. It was called the Pioneer Route. Of course. Yeah, right. Of course. Very pioneering. And right now, there's this opportunity because of um, Amtrak Joe, our president, Joe Biden, who's really... (laughs) Joseph Robinette Amtrak Biden Jr. (laughs) Yes, Yes. (laughs) who's really into trains. And in all reality, the infrastructure bill from a couple years ago set aside a bunch of money to uh, look into bringing back some old Amtrak routes. And the Pioneer route is one that's, uh, that's a possibility. I mean, personally, I'm into it. There was a time, speaking of presidents that love trains, during the Obama era that the Obama administration dreamt of connecting the United States by rail. And Salt Lake would have been kind of like the Western hub. So I think Salt Lakers are we are used to being floated this idea. We have problems with trust, but we'll also get to that. <laughs> but I want to know why people in Boise are so hyped about this. Like, what what do we offer that you don't? <laughs> well, our mayor met with the CEO of Amtrak last year, and then she met with your mayor, Ali, uh, the mayor of Salt Lake. And Boise City's government is, we're stoked. Like, <laughs> everybody's very into it. They're tweeting about it. They're asking people to write in with stories about trains and, like, kind of say, like, why they would want this And in general, like Boise doesn't have a ton of alternative means to get around outside of cars. So this train idea has really like caught the imagination of people. Yeah. And I think there's also, um, you know, we have big climate initiatives here in Boise that our mayor has championed. And so anything to get people out of their cars, we don't have Amtrak at all. But but don't you guys, doesn't Salt Lake have some Amtrak connection? Yeah, we do. We have an Amtrak train that goes through Utah I think it's called the California Zephyr. I kind of joke that like our reaction to you all being excited about this train was like, huh, what? But we knew that this was a proposal that was being floated, the Pioneer Corridor basically train up to Boise. And then also simultaneously, there's talk of a train to Vegas. But when we heard that there was a conversation starting about this, I reached out to our friend Mike Christensen, who runs the Utah Rail Passenger Association, and he was like, this is not even a first date. Like, this is barely (laughs) flirting. And so, I mean, we've been burned in the past, like I said, with the promise of rail transit, and then it kind of hasn't fully come to pass. Now, I do think there are some, like, big pieces moving in Utah and Salt Lake that could— 
lead to more funding or enthusiasm for a proposal like this. I'm thinking about the fact that Salt Lake wants to host the Olympics again, for example, if we could train people down from the Northwest for that. Like there are ways in which Salt Lake is trying to kind of like puff its chest. But at the end of the day, like the city can't fund this, right? The state has to fund it. And you all know, as residents of a sort of, I would say, more progressive political stronghold in a red state, we just are so used to being let down by the state when we need funding for cool infrastructure projects because it does feel like they're constantly trying to punish our city for being cooler than them. That's my opinion. (laughs) But it seems like, it sounds like in Boise, the vibe is this could really happen, like maybe less reticent than it is here. Is that right? I feel like it is. Um, I mean, all of our media, including us, we've been talking about it and people really like to hear us talk about uh, the train option in Boise. And I don't know, Emma, is it just kind of like a, a pick me vibe that we have in Boise? Where it's like, <laughs> please, please. Yes, always. I feel like that is the main, main Boise vibe up here. We've got real like littlest sister energy. No offense, Frankie. Uh, I'm like, can I hang out? Can I hang out? You know, so yeah. I feel like that's part of it is but also it's part of like being really isolated, you know, um, from everything, everywhere. Everything is six hours away from us, at least. And the only way to get there is drive or fly. And I do feel like there's something really romantic about having options with a with a train line. Like it just it feels like you're more part of things. You're more included. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's caught the imagination of Boise, that yes. you all could hop on the train with a little, maybe a matching weekender bag. Yes. <laughs> and come on down to Salt Lake. <laughs> yes, exactly. Allie, what about in Salt Lake? Like, I know here, you know, we're just adding lanes and with our growth, we're just adding lanes and adding lanes to I-84. What about your infrastructure? Like, is is there any cell here for Salt Lake? Yeah, I think there actually is a massive cell if it's pitched the right way, delivered and received the right way. But Right now, so I-15 is our big our big highway, and the Utah Department of Transportation is exploring the possibility of expanding it up to, you guys, like anywhere from making it a like 14 to like, there was a proposal floating around that would make it like a 23 Whoa. lane wow. highway with shoulders, <laughs> wow. like huge, 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 and actually kind of <laughs> devastating because, of course, when you grow, you have to grow somewhere. And so people are really worried, like there is talk about displacing actual homeowners to expand this highway. And Salt Lake doesn't like this idea. And even actually, I've talked to like legislators on the Hill who you would think would be into this idea who are like, I don't love it. Like what? We just keep expanding the highway forever and ever and ever. Like more cars will come. But there is this sense that like we are this sort of massive hub in the West and we've got to figure out how to get everything from people to freight into our city or through our city quickly. And so, yeah, I mean, if the right organizations get together and lobby around rail as opposed to the car or trucks, then this could be a real option. We're also looking at this like something called the Rio Grande plan right now downtown, which is basically the idea of burying our rail system underground. So I don't know, because your tracks, you said, were discontinued. This service yeah. was discontinued in 97. So I imagine you you all, too, have some rail yards yes. that are kind of an eyesore. Yeah, we've got some, too, like right near downtown. And so we'd love to follow in Denver's footsteps, just this once, <laughs> and bury our tracks Um, So that we can open up more of the city to development and also like kind of have this cool, more modern train infrastructure hub. So those are two big things that are kind of resting on the laurels of what would it look like to grow this city into this like cool metropolis? And and yeah, passenger rail could be a part of that. Hmm. Yeah, there's even talk here if we do get the Pioneer route, like next step would be some kind of a connector, uh, a little loop. Uh, maybe it's a light rail, which jealous that you have light rail. We do not, um, you know, that would take people from downtown to the airport and around. And so it's kind of like once you start talking about a train, then there's like, OK, but also we could do this. And what mm-hmm. about that? And, you know, it's spy in the sky right now, but uh, people are excited to at least dream about it train right now. Yeah. I'm picturing you, Frankie, like under the Christmas tree with like a train set. Like, <laughs> yeah. Were you that kid? Were you building tracks around the house? I totally had a train track around <laughs> my Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. 
Spring is upon us and the Utah Museum of Contemporary Art is opening four new exhibits on Friday, March 10th. As the host of a hyperlocal podcast, you know I'm excited about the idea of home. What makes a home? Who makes a home? And what are the implications of declaring home? And the Yumoka's new exhibit, Haimaz, Haimur, Kiem, Hom, features the work of artists who have the exact same questions. I'm also excited to check out the porcelain boom boxes local artists have designed. They're all up for auction to benefit good causes. And one of my favorite local artists, Matthew Sketch, has a new exhibit called Family. It's all happening at the opening reception this Friday, March 10th from 6 to 9 p.m. There will be a DJ, and I gotta tell you, Umoka openings are always fun. Reserve a free ticket today at utahmoca.org. Okay, Emma, let's talk about who would use this route. Who's getting on this train besides the three of us? Well, I think, you know, you mentioned earlier uh, how this could be a hard sell to your state government. And I want to appeal to them real fast and say, honestly, I think a big chunk of the people who would use a Boise to Salt Lake route would be Mormons, like to go see the temple. Growing up, a lot of my Mormons friends, they definitely made the trip at least once a year to go to Salt Lake and see the temple and do the tour and stuff. So Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say Mormons and people who want to go to Ikea. Um, Yes, we do not have an Ikea in Boise. It's a big sell. I know I have driven to Salt Lake to to get furniture. So, yeah, Mormons and um, people who want to go to (laughs) Ikea. That's what I think. Well, and the big temple in downtown Salt Lake is currently being remodeled. I think the grand opening is set for like 2030 or something. So there'll be that. And then, of course, if you are a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there's general conference twice a year where people travel from all over the world to Salt Lake for that. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, if you are LDS and you want to, like, go to a reunion at BYU or just visit your family, that makes sense. There's also, you know, we we live in a, a an area of the country that uh, snow and blizzards and traveling in the winter isn't great by car. And so um, I know at least our city council has talked about that, that it would relieve some pressure and allow people to not have to stress about driving for Christmas or whatever to go see family elsewhere. Yeah. You could come ski our canyons. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have more snow than we do, so that would be that would be great. Um, we could uh, maybe we'd come and see an NBA game because we don't have any professional sports. Yeah. lots of different uh, cohorts and uh, interest groups that'd be interested. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, in terms of who's going up to Boise, I would. You guys have good hot springs, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have epic hot springs, Allie. <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm told. Do we know how long this route would be? Am I on this train for three hours? Am I on this train for six hours? How long would I be on this train? (laughs) That is such a good question. Um, Let's see. It takes about five hours to drive Salt Lake to Boise. Uh, It would move slower, so maybe a little bit longer. It'd be a more leisurely trip, probably. I don't know. I'm guessing like seven hours, but I don't know. I haven't seen projections. I think that's the next thing is they... That right now we're just in early dating phase. Maybe Boise's a little bit more uh, feeling like we've already gone on a first date. Um, yeah. But it, it really, truly in the process uh, at this point, our cities are working to gather like stories and, um, you know, what would people actually want out of this? And is there a real desire? And then depending on that application, which they're submitting soon, then the feds would potentially give us some money to do an actual plan. And in the planning phase, It would be, all right, what is the ridership for real? How long would it take? Would people want that? And how much would it cost to bring it back? Because, yes, like you said, the feds want to put up money, but our city and state governments will also need to participate in this eventually. Yeah. Mayor Pete, a.k.a. our current (laughs) Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, is like, make me the economic case. And so I wonder if that's part of the reason they want stories and comments is because it's hard to predict it, right? Like, you just don't know if people are going to show. And you're battling uphill the reality that 
this train hasn't worked in the past because of low ridership. Yeah, exactly. There was a Boise City Chamber meeting that talked about this fairly recently. And actually, I think it was the executive director of Utah Transit's Transit Authority was there. And he said, basically, like, if we're going to do this, we have to be aggressive. We have to be unified across our states and across with all these cities to really make the pitch. Mm-hmm. So is there will? <laughs> are we are we there? Do we want this enough? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think our cities and our states have a lot in common. And one of the things that comes up a lot on our show is, do we have the political will? Right. Like it feels like we always end up in that place and maybe we're there again. (laughs) (laughs) But I want to ask you, Emma, there, of course, we've established that there's a lot that needs to happen before we get this train. And maybe it is a transit pipe dream. I don't know. We'll get there. But if it were to happen and I were to do a weekend trip up to Boise, how would you host me? I'm staying on your couch, by the way. <laughs> Things are moving quickly. <laughs> what are we doing? If you rode the train up, I would come down to Salt Lake, meet you. We'd stop in Pocatello, go to Lava Hot Springs, because <gasps> I feel like for a lot of people, that is like a very singular experience. Lava is gorgeous. The springs there is just perfect. And we'd hop back on. You know, we wouldn't stop in Mountain Home, obviously, for any reason, <laughs> but uh, we would just we would just come straight into Boise. And then I would do all the Boise things with you. You know, I think like you you have a lake, you know, you have skiing, you have mountains, you have snow. So I would do like singular Boise stuff with you. You know, I would be like, we're going to the Basque block. We're going on the green belt. We're going to do like the things that maybe downtown Salt Lake doesn't have because they're singular to Boise. I'm picturing getting off the train with you in Boise and you turning to me and being like, so have you heard of fry sauce? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Have you had a finger steak, our uh, state (laughs) delicacy? Uh, (laughs) What is a finger steak? Oh, my gosh. I thought for sure you would know that. And I was joking. Yeah. So uh, Idaho is known for, uh, as well as fry sauce, a deep fried piece of steak, which is like a battered piece of steak uh, called a finger steak, which is delicious. It's a it's a monument to fried food is what it is. It sounds like fair food. It feels like fair food, except you can get it at a lot of restaurants here. Um, It is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a go to unhealthy snack for sure. Wow. I want a shirt for when I come back on the train that's like, I took a seven hour train to Boise and all I got was a finger stick. (laughs) (laughs) We'll get those made (laughs) immediately. (laughs) Oh, my God. And what about you, Allie? If I ride the rails up to Salt Lake and I'm going to be honest here, I've been to Salt Lake a bunch of times and I'm not being a jerk. This is probably more me. I have not yet had a good time in Salt Lake. So uh, what oh. would you take? Yeah. And I, maybe that's because I have mostly done overnighters there. So I've been kind of rushed through. But what yeah. would you take me so that I'd be like, oh, it's one of my favorite cities. I love it now. OK, well, I am assuming that like, let's see. Now I feel immense pressure to design <laughs> no a good <laughs> day. OK, here's where we're going to start. We are going to start at the weirdest little spot in the city. It's called Gilgal Gardens. Are either of you familiar with it? No. no. Uh-uh. OK, so basically what this is, is this guy who was a religious sort of zealot. He was Mormon, loved his faith, loved his God, was so enthusiastic about his religion that he turned his backyard into a sculpture garden. And so it's this weird sculpture garden like the stuff is weird like there's like a giant foot there's a sphinx that is joseph smith's head on oh, the sphinx. <laughs> i'm so sold already <laughs> there is all kinds of weird weird sculptures back there but the coolest thing about it is that like half of the journey is finding it because he built this in his backyard so it's in kind of a historic neighborhood so it's just like in a backyard like you just kind wow. of wander you get a nice coffee and you kind of wander your way in so we're going to gilgal gardens where i'm going to be like welcome to the weirdest plot of soil in the weirdest little city in America. (laughs) And then I'm going to take you to the Natural History Museum to see one of the West's foremost dinosaur collections. Okay. Because even if you're not into, like, science, we have amazing dinosaur collection, and I will teach you how to identify the actual fossils from the cast of fossils. And then we can walk up City Creek Canyon, like, take in some views. Um... 
get a drink, I think, maybe at a rooftop bar, because as I understand it, Boise doesn't have much of a skyline quite yet. Do you have rooftop bars? We need more rooftop we bars. We do, yeah. This yeah. is yeah. a thing, yes. Yeah, so we can do some skyline hopping, like go to some rooftop bars, have a very, very not strong but expensive drink. <laughs> um, and then... Yeah, we're going to go see sports, like catch a jazz game in the spring. Or if it's summer, we have a professional soccer team, Real Salt Lake. And our soccer stadium was just named one of the most beautiful MLS stadiums in the country. So and we can take the train there. Like you could even probably get on the train after the soccer game and like head straight back up to Boise overnight. Uh, I love this day. This sounds right? like an amazing day. I'm totally in. You're going to have fun in Salt Lake. I promise, Emma. <laughs> I promise. Okay, you two. Thank you for the chat. Frankie, you're such a transit nerd. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing the facts. Emma, it's great to see you. And I don't know. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys on the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ali. Bring a wine opener. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> see you in the dining car. Yeah. That's right. We love heading north to those Sawtooth Mountains, but the other piece of this passenger rail puzzle that I am geeking over is the desert corridor to Las Vegas, baby. As we mentioned, these proposals require major state buy-in, but we did hear from Salt Lake City Mayor Erin Mendenhall on the matter. She says she's excited to be a part of this conversation about expanding passenger rail options in the Intermountain West and that Boise and Salt Lake have a lot to offer each other. Hear that, Boise? We're in this together now. As for our regional transit network of trains and buses, you can now buy tickets and time your route through an app. That's right. No more quarters. It's called the Transit app. It's not UTA's app. It's a broader pre-existing one for all major metro areas, but it now includes us. I was playing with it this morning, and I got to be honest, it's pretty slick. So hello, the future. Oh, And happy 53rd birthday, UTA. We love you. That's all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. If you've got friends or family in Boise, they should absolutely be listening to CityCast Boise and reading the Hey Boise newsletter. You can find them at boise.citycast.fm. As for us, we'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around our beloved city. Bye. Bye.